Well, we'll let Eileen tell you, and it's, it was important in her life. So without further delay, I have the great pleasure and honor to introduce Eileen Simon. Thank you so much, Carol, for that kind and inspired introduction. I definitely think I have one of the most energetic presenters in the room. Thank you to Legal Momentum for your recognition and to Valerie Gelb for the nomination. I'm humbled to be in this group of remarkable and esteemed women. Suzanne, Gina, and Linda, congratulations to you, as well as to the other amazing women who have been recognized and celebrated over the past 15 years. Thank you, too, to my family, who braved traffic to be here, to my colleagues here today who've supported, mentored, partnered, at times put up with me, and taught me what I know today. I'm particularly proud because I couldn't agree more with what Legal Momentum stands for, advancing the rights of women and girls by using the power of law to create innovative public policy. This award represents the individual and collective efforts, truly the village, that it takes to change the lives of those in need and to create a truly equal workforce. I'm fortunate to work for a company that takes diversity and inclusion, both financial and otherwise, very seriously. I have both the opportunity and the responsibility to lead by example, to help create an equal workplace for women and girls. MasterCard does amazing work in the areas of financial inclusion and diversity. It's about the words, the actions, and the resources, all of which MasterCard puts behind its employees, our shared commitments, and organizations such as Legal Momentum. As a daughter, a wife, a mother of a daughter, and a lawyer, this mission is particularly personal for me. I want my daughter and future generations of women to feel that shattering the glass ceiling is no longer elusive. It's no longer a thing. And no matter what side of the political aisle you sit on, I think we all can agree that the prospect of the first women in the Oval Office is exciting. So my passion... My passion for diversity and inclusion in the workplace was shaped by my upbringing. As some of you in the room may know, I grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey, answer to Carol's question, which is a diverse, voluntarily integrated community that my parents chose for those reasons. Diversity and inclusion remain important there, and they also are important to the way my husband and I are raising our daughter. Perhaps because I was immersed in a diverse environment, I took for granted that everyone was as open-minded as what I was exposed to. I was shocked to discover how untrue that can be in certain situations, and I was motivated to get involved. It wasn't until I got to MasterCard that I became conscious of my gender as a differentiator in a professional setting. When I started with the company about 16 years ago, the group of people around the table were fairly homogeneous, mostly white men with banking backgrounds. Today, the company has evolved tremendously. We not only look different, we think and act differently. We do business in 210 countries and territories, and our employee base reflects the consumers and businesses that use our products. As a result, we're bringing in more people from different backgrounds that have varied life and work experiences. The inclusion conversation within the company is a microcosm of what's happening globally. And that conversation is going on this week with the MasterCard Global Inclusion Summit, which I had the privilege of attending yesterday. We are by far a more vibrant and dynamic organization today than we were when I joined in 1999. Along with my colleagues at MasterCard, I'm a big believer in mentoring others. Our culture encourages it, both at work and beyond. We're also conscious, of course, that mentoring is a way that we can help cultivate the next generation of talented leaders. So I want to share my personal recipe for success, or what's worked for me. Why well, study law? Although I didn't realize it at the time, with the benefit of hindsight, I truly view law as incomparable training to think, to write, to view the world critically and analytically. Law is a tremendous platform to do other things. That's why this organization's name, Legal Momentum, resonates with me. 
Legal training gives you a grounding and the momentum to do so many different things with your career. So confession, I did not grow up knowing that I wanted to be a lawyer. Like many of us, I was influenced by my environment and I had a lot of exposure to psychology in the home from my parents' professions and I also studied it in college. My daughter, Table 12, on the other hand, is the product of two litigators and seems destined for the courtroom if her explanations of unfinished homework or why she actually doesn't have to clean her room are any guide. <laughs> women helping women. Patricia already quoted Margaret Thatcher on the topic, and I think it's incumbent among women leaders at all levels to bring other women along. Valerie Gelb, who nominated me for today's award, truly embodies this spirit. I do my part by acting as the executive sponsor to the Women's Leadership Network, or WLN, at MasterCard. That's a business resource group focused on enriching career opportunities, inspiring success, encouraging entrepreneurial leadership, and empowering women to lead at MasterCard. Take a risk. Put your hand up. Take on a temporary assignment at home or overseas, an additional project, get involved in community activity. Don't wait for the opportunity to find you. At MasterCard, we talk a great deal about double hatting, stretching yourself to take on something beyond your traditional role. And I would encourage everyone to double hat, whether at work, in their communities, in any circles that they find challenging and rewarding. Importance of finding sponsors. In your career, it's important to find not only mentors, but equally as important, if not more so, sponsors. Mentoring relationships tend to form spontaneously. Chemistry, people meet each other, they get along. While, at least in my view, sponsorships are a bit different and need some type of organizational structure. A sponsor would be someone who has the influence, the seat at the table, to advocate for you. And it's been said that many women are over-mentored and under-sponsored. Why? Perhaps because women are a bit more uncomfortable than men in seeking out sponsoring relationships. So resolve this year to move your career forward by identifying a sponsor, and if need be, by asking your firm or your company to support you in that effort. I was able to work hard and to have the opportunities that I've had so far. I could not have done that without the support of my family, who sometimes admittedly gets the short end of the stick. I have high expectations of others, my team, my family, but no more than I have of myself. And I believe strongly in giving back. For me, this takes many forms, mentoring at work, mentoring law students or lawyers at the beginning of their career, serving on the board of an organization whose mission is aligned with my values, and volunteering locally. I'm on the board of the Westchester YWCA. CEO Maria Imperial is in the audience today. And that organization is dedicated to empowering women and eliminating racism, admittedly a broad mandate. I value that role greatly and feel it's another outlet through which I can make a difference in the community in which I live and work. Thank you so very much for this wonderful recognition. It's definitely inspired me to do much more and to aim higher. Thank you.